that's what rooted the best. That's what's got all these fantastic roots on it, is that soft, new growth that's just in a prime growth stage. So if you guys watched that orchard tour video, you remember that I brought you out here and showed you all of our blueberries and the blueberries that were producing the biggest and most abundant of all was this Toro. And I showed this to you earlier, but I think I wanna take some cuttings off of this particular plant. And I've seen some good areas that we can take cuttings off of. And I wanna go over that with you real quick, exactly what type of material we're looking for. So today is July 11th, and that is early enough in the summer, late enough, we're past the spring, that this material on this plant has grown, it's started to harden off, and it's ready to take softwood cuttings from. So here's what I'm talking about. This particular branch right here is actually more of a sucker. Uh, it's coming from way down below and shooting straight up, and this will help form more branching for the years to come. We could take some material off of this, but really what I want to show you is this, because people get hung up on what time of year to take the cuttings, and really what's more important is the condition of the wood. So if you look at this branch right here, up at the top, it's just kind of, it's really flimsy and floppy, and it's just because it's new succulent growth. If you look down here, it's a little more firm. A little more woody and if you go down all the way near the bottom it's really tough it's hard to bend it's just really firm and so that's what we're talking about is the condition of the wood so when I'm gonna take some cuttings from this but this is this is really soft up here I don't want to start with this wood I think what I'm gonna do is clip that off right there at the top and then take a probably an 8 inch section and I might even be able to get away with one further down, although this is woodier and it's, it's, it's a little bit more lignified, I guess you'd say. And so it's not going to root as quickly. Now here's the next blueberry bush right close by that Toro. Now I wanted to show you this because I saw some growth coming up from the ground. Now this is new fresh growth and you can see that is just really soft, supple growth. That is not good growth for cuttings. I wouldn't try to use that for cutting material. You definitely want something more woody. All right, so I've gotten a bunch of cuttings off of those plants and I'm gonna whittle these down to six to eight inch sections. And now before we go any further, I wanna show you real quick. This was that long branch I was showing you where it was a little bit more soft at the tip, but firm down at the end. It grew real fast early on. This was coming off of an older branch and it's new growth from this year, but it's already started kind of hardening off a little bit more at the tip and it's nice and woody at the base. This actually might be a better cutting than that one down below, but it's a good idea to take different cuttings from different parts of the plant just to make sure that you're gonna get something to take. So these shorter cuttings, I won't whittle down at all. I'm just gonna remove some leaves, but the longer cuttings here, I'm gonna whittle down into a couple different sections. All right, so in the end here, what I've got is it looks like seven different cuttings. And what I've done is left two leaves at the top of each of them there. They're about six to eight inches long each of them, depending on how much growth they had on them to begin with. And you can see those are probably, I don't know, the about half a pencil thickness. These are some smaller ones. We'll see if they root. But either way, I'm treating them all the same. Now, the last thing I'm going to do before I stick these cuttings, and I'll pick a bigger one, so you can see that easier is we're going to go like I always do right below a node because the node the area where the nodes are have a higher concentration of undifferentiated cells that can turn into roots and then I like to cut at an angle let's see if I can do this with you seeing actually I like to usually go about this way from the node here and just snip a little end off and then that's what you end up with there. And like I said, there's a little node there. It's right below a node. And so the chances are higher that those cells will multiply and divide in that area and then start growing out roots. 
Now, once I snip the ends off, I want to work quickly. So I'm going to snip the ends off all these, and then I'm going to dip them in some water just to moisten the ends. I don't want them to dry out. And then we'll dip them in our rooting powder and get these guys stuck. So now I've got the ends of all these guys clipped, and we're going to dip them into some rooting hormone. I got them kind of lightly damp in there and shook off the excess water. And this is Hormidin 3, like I usually use, but you can use any rooting hormone that you get at your local garden center. You can find it on Amazon. It's not of too much importance, the type that you use. It gets a little more important if you start getting into hardwood, some hardwood cuttings, even some semi-hardwood cuttings, but I just kind of dip it in there, swirl it around, make sure there's hormone on the ends of all of them, and that's good enough. So a lot of you saw the rose video that I did and you saw me dip the cutting into the rooting hormone and then push it right down into the sand and a lot of you were asking, hey Mike, won't that just, as you're pushing it down through, actually I used fur bark for that one, but after, as you're pushing it down through the medium, won't that just push off the rooting hormone? And you know, I've been getting that question a ton and I was even thinking about it when I did it because I knew I was going to get that question. but. Here's what I do. This is my little tip or secret or whatever you want to call it. This is what I do with all my rhododendrons. Anything that, you know, I want to make sure that it's got a good coating and it's going to absorb the hormone. So I'll dip them in the powder just like this. And then I just set them on the bench. I just lay them down for a few minutes and just let them sit there and soak up that hormone. And you can see there's hormone all the way in the tips and it's just kind of moistening on that water and right down there in the base of all these guys and these plants will be able to absorb that in. Now, here's the other thing. When I push this down into the medium, it's pushing the hormones on the bottom side of it. It's not necessarily along the stem that this is gonna root, although it may it's got hormone on the bottom side. So as I'm pushing it down, it's just pushing that hormone against the base. It's not going anywhere. Some of it may get rubbed off, but it's inconsequential. It's not the biggest deal in the world. Just push it down in there. If you feel like you really want to, you can use a dibbler and you know just a stick, push it in the sand, make a hole, and then push it down. But I like to just push these right down in there because it gives it full, good, direct contact with your medium. So we've waited for a few minutes now and this has been able to kind of soak up and absorb some of that hormone. Now I'm just gonna take our little cuttings and we'll start right in the center of the pot and we'll push them down about halfway and we're gonna go all the way around and just kind of work our way around here, trying to be careful. It doesn't, you don't have to be perfect about this, but we're trying to be careful not to overlap too many leaves, just so that the leaves get as much light as possible and there's some good airflow around them because you don't you don't want uh, a whole lot of uh, moisture build up in one spot. You want plenty of air to be able to get around all of those little leaves so that you have less likelihood of getting any rot. So I want to make a point here. Now with my rhododendrons, I'll put them in the medium like this and then I let them sit just like they are for an hour, two hours, something like that. And it gives them a chance to sit in their little fur bark medium. Now we've got sand here, but it gives them a chance to sit there and just absorb some of that hormone. Then I come back and water them in so that they're fully settled. It's been, you know, only a few minutes here for these guys. I'm gonna go ahead and water them in now. I'm not too concerned about it. I'm sure we're gonna get these to root because it's earlier in the summer and these are softwood cuttings. And, you know, generally things root a lot faster and a lot easier as softwood cuttings. All right, so I watered them in, and then one more thing, people ask me all the time, won't that rinse the hormone off? Yes, it'll probably rinse a little bit of it off, but these guys are stuffed down in there, and it's a little cocoon in there around that sand, and there's gonna be hormone left around that cutting, so I'm not too concerned about it. And then finally, the last thing we're gonna do, because these are softwood cuttings, I know I've preached about not covering your cuttings, but those are hardwood cuttings that you're not covering. The last thing we're gonna do here is cover these guys and we're just gonna use this one gallon water bottle. I used a soda bottle before, but any kind of a plastic bottle or covering will work. Just get these tucked up in there. And then I'll just kind of push it down to the sand a little bit, maybe a half a centimeter and just set it in place. And that's it. We're gonna leave the cap on here for right now just so it builds up good hu amount of humidity. I'm gonna put this on the north side of a building because I live in the Northern Hemisphere. If you live in Australia or New Zealand, you'll want this on the south side of a building and you don't ever want the sun to hit this. Lots of overhead skylight, 
but no direct sun or these things will cook. All right, so here we are again, north side of my pole barn, and there's absolutely no direct sun, but lots of overhead skylight, plenty of light for these things to root. And if you saw that PAR meter test, click on the link in the description below here and you'll be able to see that. We were able to find out that the north side of a building blocking complete sun, but allowing for lots of overhead skylight is the perfect amount of PAR in order to get cuttings to root. So here we are, we're just gonna sit here it's already starting to build up humidity. We'll come back and check on these when something's happened. Here we go. All right, so it's been several months since we started these little blueberry cuttings and I thought now would be as good a time as any to see what they look like. It is October 13th today. Let's see if we got roots. Now some of these didn't make it. I think we started with like seven cuttings total. This one you can see has died back last and I think part of the reason is because I just kept tugging on them to see if they had roots, but we've got four left that are green and viable two of them still have their leaves on them which actually are the smaller branches here i've got thicker branches right here where the leaves fell off and these smaller ones i feel like when i tug on them they're really firm down in there and i feel like the smaller ones might have done better this guy just came up real easy let's start with him and see what we've got i'm gonna dig down a little bit and it's got some roots, just very, very small little roots here. Show them to you. That's cutting number one. And some of these guys, like I said, I've been tugging on a little bit. A little bit impatient here. Well, let's set him down. And let's go after some of these. Let's go after this bigger, fatter one right here. See what he looks like. Nothing on that one. No roots at all on that guy. All right, these guys I know have roots because I've been tugging and they are firmly entrenched in that sand. See what we got here. I don't want to tear them up too much. There's one of them. Nice solid roots right there. Check that out. Pretty cool. Nice solid roots. And there's some things I'm noticing here that I want to talk about. And here's the other one. Good solid root system. Nice little blueberry. That's going to grow into a beautiful little blueberry plant. So here they are with the roots rinsed off. Yeah, I had to do that just to show them to you. Isn't that cool? Nice little root system on both of these little cuttings and they'll grow on into beautiful little blueberry plants. Now the other one rooted a little bit, had a few small roots on it, but I'm not that impressed, so I'm not even gonna count it. I think we started with like seven cuttings. It might have been nine. I think it was an odd number though. I can't remember. I'm sure when I'm editing this, I'll find out for myself. But, you know, we got two of them. This was a pretty low percentage, rooting percentage. But what did we learn from this? I know I learned something from it. For instance, the fatter cuttings tended to rot or not root at all. In fact, here was one that rotted. It was a fatter cutting. This one didn't root. It didn't rot, but it didn't root. But these little guys here, look how much smaller in diameter. Look how much smaller in diameter. The other thing that you'll want to notice here is I actually snipped these from further down the branch. The wood was a little bit more semi-firm. So as the, as the branch matures and grows upward, you've got the top growth and you've got the middle growth and the bottom growth. And as these things grow, the wood matures over time this was more semi-firm wood and this was the top you can see it was the top of the branch the top growth and it was more soft wood it was just in a real high active growth state so that tells me in the future if i take these blueberry cuttings which i'm sure i will take more blueberry cuttings i'm going to be taking them from the tips of the branches midsummer, maybe even sooner, maybe even earlier on in the year, like early summer or late spring from soft wood cuttings because that's what rooted the best. That's what's got all these fantastic roots on it is that soft new growth that's just in a prime growth stage. So can you root the semi firm wood like this? Yeah, I've seen it done but we had a lot more success with the soft wood cuttings. The, the material, it was more soft. So I would just, you know, if you guys are really interested, I know a lot of you out there wanted to see a video about rooting blueberries, and there it is. I think this told us a lot right here. If you want to root your blueberries, take the tips. Take about, what is that? 
five inches off the tip of your growing branches when they're just growing like crazy. You don't want them to be too soft. You don't want them to be so soft that when you cut it, they just limp right over. You want them to get a little bit firmed up. That's why I said maybe early summer, not late spring, but I would take the top of the growth and stick those guys, try to get them stuck earlier on in the summer so you've got all summer to root. And then if it gets too late in the season, you could put them on some bottom heat, but there you go. The little guys rooted really, really well. So I don't know about you, but I'm really impressed with what I learned from this one. And I think I'm going to take this into the future and really do something with it. I'm going to be taking the tips of these cuttings from now on. I hope you guys learned something too. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to follow along and see how these little guys turn out. I'm going to put them right back in this sand and we'll just let them go dormant through the winter. But anyway, have a fantastic week guys and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.